right dudes back for another one this time we're going to talk about wound ballistics okay uh i have always had like a lot of interest in terminal ballistics and wound ballistics right it's not too important it's not something you need to be like super caught up in but um at the same time you know I do want to have a discussion with y'all about taking game, preserving as much meat as possible, and damaging hides the least as possible, while also being realistic about what it's going to take to actually put meat on the table, okay, after SHTF goes down. So, I think talking about wound ballistics matters. And then, at the same time, you know, a lot of people that have followed my uh, my social media stuff are big into firearms and knives and that kind of thing. So I think it's a topic that's worth covering, okay? So if we're talking wound ballistics, right, the biggest contributors to that are velocity is really number one, okay? And then you have mass and and caliber, right? Because let's say a, something the size of a, of a needle that weighs... 100 pounds but it's still the size of the needle right it's it's still gonna punch a small hole caliber definitely def definitely matters in there and then you have bullet design okay um, and there's kind of this magical point all right i can't remember the doctor's name but there's a, a a doctor who's done a lot of research he was in vietnam a lot of research on how velocity affects wound ballistics and he kind of came up with this magical 2,000 feet per second mark, okay? So that's kind of a good place to base things, all right? When a, when a bullet has reached 2,000 feet per second or is still going 2,000 feet per second or above when it reaches that target, living target, okay? There are certain things that it does. And what happens is, is when it hits you, right, there is a... There is a temporary wound cavity. Your flesh is moving away from that bullet. Well, if that bullet is traveling 2,000 feet per second or faster, the flesh will move so fast that it will actually tear in places, which turns a temporary wound cavity in certain places into a permanent wound cavity. So now you're looking at damage not only caused by the bullet itself and the bullet's design, but also damage strictly caused by velocity, okay? Now, that is, uh-oh, hold on. Sorry about that, dudes. Had to handle some ranch shit, okay? And then my birds were all freaked out and just constantly making noise. So we're getting back at it, though, all right? So... We've talked about velocity and what velocity can do and the magic 2,000 feet per second mark, okay? But what I've learned is that it doesn't always have to be 2,000 feet per second, okay? Excuse me. You can have a bullet going less than 2,000 feet per second, not too much less than 2,000 feet per second, let's say 1,600, that is a bullet designed to deliver a lot of energy, immediately or well-designed hollow point okay that can have the same effect and i think it it the size of that bullet matters okay the mass of that bullet matters as well so if you go down to 1600 feet per second and it's a 22 all right you're not going to get that as a matter of fact a 22 caliber bullet with a poor design like a full metal jacket doing maybe 2200 feet per second might not produce that tearing effect okay from that temporary cavity. Whereas on flip side, there's a video done, interesting video done by uh, the Firearms Blog TV, right? Which is a TFB TV on YouTube. A guy did a video called when 357 Magnum is more than a Magnum. And he shot some 357 mag hollow points out of a rifle. They were doing 1600 feet per second. And these hollow points impacted the ballistic gel, uh, tore pedals off, created separate wound channels, and created larger permanent wound cavities than you would see in a hollow point from 357 mag, okay? 
cavities like you would see in a rifle cartridge that's going faster. All right. So you have to keep that in mind. Okay. It's not like 2000 feet per second is the magic mark. And it kind of, it kind of is, but it's kind of not, you know what I mean? Um, so it is what it is. All right. And you know, my own personal perspective on it is like full metal jackets aren't going to perform as well as quality bullets. And we're going to get into that when we talk about bullet design, but I think you're more likely to see bigger permanent wound cavities from velocity with well-designed bullets than you're going to see with full metal jacket. Okay. Next thing, let's get into caliber, right? I say this all the time and it's a bigger bullet makes a bigger hole. And you know what? All things considered equal guys. It's true. You take a 22 long rifle, a 38 special and a 44 special and you shoot them all at a living creature and they're all doing a thousand feet per second. The 44 special is more likely to kill you. Okay. It's going to have more energy and it's going to make a bigger hole, especially when it comes to bullet design. Okay. So all things considered equal, the thing you have to really remember about bullets, about caliber and mass. Okay. Is that all things considered equal, it does make a bigger hole. You also have to remember that you are going to have more recoil imparted to you by firing a bullet with more mass, and which is generally going to be a larger caliber bullet. Okay, so for those of you that are kind of inexperienced in firearms, going with a larger caliber rifle, you know, for shit hit the fan, you know, right now is probably not going to be ideal you're probably going to want to go with something that's smaller, like a 5.56, five, okay? 7.62 by 39.2, although a bigger bullet does not have a lot of recoil, but it does have more than 5.56, five, okay? So that's something to keep in mind. I'm sure we will get into that more, okay? We're going to try and stay on track, though, and we are going to go straight into bullet design, okay? Bullet design is extremely, extremely important. Right. If you want to look up the Miami Dade shootout, it was in Miami, obviously, Florida, okay, in the 80s. You had two bank robbers that were robbing banks, and the FBI had stashed some agents in the area, and boom, dudes hit a bank. The FBI intercepted these guys. They had a, a chase in vehicles, and they were able to kind of pit this vehicle. Well, you know, one of these dudes gets out with like a 12 gauge shotgun. I think it was. And the other one had a, a mini 14, I think. And the dude with the mini 14 was an ex ranger had been hit lethally upon exiting the car, but continued shooting and killing FBI agents for the next like 90 seconds. Anyways, the FBI got into it and took a look at it. And what they determined was that the poor bullets being used by their agents was what got a number of their agents killed in that gunfight. And had they had better quality bullets, dude with the, with the uh, mini 14, which I, that's what I think it was. I, I read about it a while ago. Okay. So don't hold me to that, but he would have been dead and on the ground earlier. Okay. He would have bled out faster. <clears throat> so in, in my own experience, in my own experience, it's, there's like no doubt in my mind, okay, that bullet quality and bullet design is huge. It really, really matters, guys, okay? And I know a lot of us, you know, preppers and survivalists, we buy a lot of full metal jacket because it's cheap. It's kind of easy to prep. It's easy to have those bullets. But I'm telling you, I have shot a lot of live shit with full metal jacket. And you better hit it right where you need to hit it. You're really better, okay? Whereas if you shoot the same animal in the same spot with a high quality bullet, you're more likely to drop it. And it's if it does ha if it does, you know, scurry on off into the freaking brush and you gotta go track it and find it and shit like that, <clears throat> you're probably gonna have a better freaking wound, uh, better blood trail to follow with higher quality bullets. You will have that, you know. Can I say that definitively for every single shot you make? No, I can't, right? I'm telling you, my damn animals today. <laughs> There's a car like a half mile away and my dog's freaking out. All right, so, um, you know, I can't definitively say that, but yeah, in general, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get a better blood trail with hollow points. The animal's not going to go as far. 
And like I was saying, you know, with with caliber, okay, hollow points expand. It's going to remove that margin of error. I don't think I got into it because I tried to do this video early and the birds were making a lot of noise. So let me let me break it down like this, just in case I, I skipped it. Okay, I've got that 22, that 38 special, and that 44 mag. Right? You expect bullets these days to expand to double their normal size if they're hollow points. That's the standard. Okay, you know, some guys are like you know they'll accept 0.9 you know, uh, increase in size, but two times is what you're generally looking for. Okay. And if I were to shoot a guy near his heart with that, with my 38 special and the bullet expands to 0. 0.76 inches, right? Two times that normal diameter, but I barely miss his heart. Had I been using a 44 special, it would have expanded to 0. 0.88 inches and I would have gone through the lining of his heart and damaged his heart in part okay could have been enough to totally end it sooner all right so bull design very 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 legitimate legitimate thing okay now there are cheaper bullets that are badass okay soft points soft points or flat nose bullets that are lead flat nose, not like the full metal jacket flat nose. Okay. Those are badass and they're pretty affordable. Even these days where everything freaking costs a damn arm and a leg. Okay. So those are pretty good rounds. Also, uh, wad cutters and semi wad cutters. Okay. Any, any bullet really with a flat face on it or a nearly flat face on the flip side, you lose range, okay? And there's plenty of, if we're talking about pistol cartridges, those are great. Those are great kind of cartridges for, for handguns. But if you're talking like rifle cartridges, you're really giving up a lot of range with soft points or, uh, you know, or flat nose soft points and that kind of shit. You're better off with, with like those polymer tipped hollow points, okay? Right, they look like a Spitzer, okay, but they got a little bit of polymer at the tip, so they fly really well. They've got a good ballistic coefficient, okay. You're gonna get that hollow point way down range, man. And that dude with that 22 long rifle that's been lobbing rounds at you from 450 yards for the last freaking 10 minutes, you know, you're gonna pop him when you, you know, when you finally decide you want to, because you got that a, a freaking good round that's gonna do some serious damage when it gets there. Okay, so that's it, guys. I'm going to get into this topic. I'm going to talk about it more. I Don't get too wrapped up in it, okay? Um, you know, it's terminal ballistics and wound ballistics is like not everyone, and not everyone needs to look into it and, and, and be totally involved in it, okay? I think you can take my word for it, what I've said, you know, I've looked at it a ton over the years, okay? But the, the biggest thing you're going to want to do is make sure you've got platforms that are going to work for you. Make sure you have some high-quality bullets. Make sure that when you are buying hollow points that you buy quality hollow points. And you're also going to want to make sure you do have some full metal jackets because they definitely have their place. And I'm going to get into that in the next one. All right, maybe not the exact next video, but I am going to cover like how to do minimal damage to game animals and how to do maximum damage to humans. Now I got someone ripping rounds off over there. It's weird because like the nearest neighbor's three miles away. <laughs> yeah, guys. All right. Hey, again, thanks for being a patron. Um, I really appreciate the support. And uh, I hope that you guys are finding some value in these videos. So let's hear it in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to think about it. You know, what you're thinking, whatever. I'll be all over it. And, um, and uh, we'll have a good chat. Okay? So I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.